that's all the questions. We'll go ahead and put away our stuff and start going to class. If you're going to come to class and ask questions, you should do it. Once you're here, and it's 29. Uh, really three forms to choose from. We got standard, an intercept, and a vertex. Which form is that? Is this in? Standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's standard. Standard is um, not the greatest. Okay, we can use a quadratic formula on it, so that's a nice thing about it. But also, it's not the greatest for graphing. Okay. The intercept and the vertex form, I think if we had been paying attention and, and practicing on our own and that kind of thing, become pretty evident what you can get out of them. The intercept form is two factors multiplied by two to each other, which you can easily set to zero and solve for x in each of those factors. Uh, the vertex form is simply you know some modifications, left, right shift, up, down shift, uh, uh, making it steep or less steep, opening up or down. But this, from its appearance, its form does not immediately imply uh, points that are easy to find. Vertex form, easy to find the vertex. Intercept form, easy to find the intercept. This one, uh, not immediately evident. So how is it that we find a point that's a special point, an important point that we want to know? Okay, yes. It's not quite enough to say negative b over 2. What's the significance of negative b over 2a? It gives you the x, and then you just put it in. The x of the vertex, right? The x 
in the vertex. Great. So we're going to find the vertex's x value. That's going to be negative b. That's negative 12 over 2 times a. a is 3. So negative 12 over 6 is equal to 2. How do we find the y value? Put it in for x, that is the x value. If you want to the y value, that's what functions do. They turn x's into y's. Okay, so 3 times, we've got 4 there, minus 24 minus 8. I'm going to do some of that stuff in my hand here. 12 minus 24 minus 8. That's negative 12 minus 8, so negative 20. Okay, so there's your vertex. And what's the axis of symmetry? Tell me specifically, or you can tell me generally what the axis of symmetry is. Here's our vertex way down here. A line the vertex is on. So there's a line, a vertical line, that goes through the vertex, and that's the one that the, the parabola gets reflected over. <coughs> We draw a dot, dot it's not really part of the graph, it just kind of helps us. Um, so, how, how would you tell me what that line is? An equation for that line? What's that? Yeah, is there an equation for, the, for this vertical line? x equals negative 2. So the axis of symmetry uh, x is equal to negative 2. You can look. It goes through x is negative 2. That is the one thing that defines it. It goes through the x value negative 2. y value is all over the place. The thing, the thing that's always true about this line is that x is equal to negative 2. This is all we really need. Vertex? How do we know it's in vertex form? Um, <coughs> not sure why you know that. Why'd you say it? Because it has all of the things. It has all the things. Yes. The up, down, left, right, shift, yeah. and all that stuff? Yes. What's another telltale sign? We're looking at vertex form. Yeah. We'll always have an x squared, but the vertex form is unique in that the x uh, is inside of parentheses and the parentheses is squared. Right. Other forms, either you have an, a, an ax squared plus bx plus c like this, or you might have two different factors times each other, but this one is a parentheses squared, two identical factors. This gives us our vertical shift. And it goes which direction? Mm -hmm. Up or down is vertical, and in this case it'll go down. down one. Down one. And what does this tell us? Right three. Right three. This guy. Opens down. Opens down. Okay. So we got our vertex is going to be at, go to the right three and down one. It's going to now open down, and it's not uh, steeper or less steep than normal, right? Normally your parabola will go, one goes in and one comes out, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, right? It does exactly that if we're moving in reference to the vertex, uh, but the, the only difference is it, it goes downward. So it should go over one and down one. If you go two to the right of the vertex, that's going to be four uh, vertically away from the vertex. Uh, and we can reflect that over the axis of 
symmetry, we got some good points. If you had nothing but the vertex and a couple more points in the correct places and a parabola drawn, that would be stupendous. Okay. Another question? Just remind you again, zeros of a function just means that the function is equal to zero. The output is zero. Say so the value of the function, the function is where the function is equal to, the function, whatever has a value of, we're always kind of at that y value. The inputs, we talk, we, as we talked about before, the inputs are all pretty much the same for all of, uh, of all functions. Right? Zero, one, two, three. The thing that we care about really is what comes out of the so if the function is worth zero, then the y value is zero. That's what we have. So if you want to find the zeros of the function, you want to find when y is equal to zero. So the zeros of the function are actually the x values that make the whole thing zero. <coughs> so how do we solve this equation? Can we really specify several different ones. The quadratic equation? Uh, yeah. You mean the quadratic formula? Yeah. Okay. So this is an equation, because it's equals, and it's quadratic because we have x squared. I'm just going to be nitpicky about that. Uh, the formula is this thing you would normally think a formula would do. Right? You take some, some given values, you plug it into the formula, it gives you boom, some new result. Okay. So you could use a quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay. And, uh, Um, and I can have it up on the board for you so you don't have to remember it. That's not the important part. The more important is that you're going to derive it. Okay. So in this case, b is negative 11. So negative, negative 11. Plus or minus the square root of 11 squared, negative 11 squared. Minus 4 times a, which is, what is a? 1. 1, pretty good. c, 18. Times a, which is one, your positive eleven plus or minus the square root one twenty one minus four times eighteen is two eleven plus or minus the square root of Square root of 49. 11. 11 plus or minus 7 over 2. Okay, that's two different answers. 11 plus 7 is 18 over 2. 11 minus 7 is what? 4. 4 over 2. Given that those answers came out so nicely, there's actually another way we could do it. Two other ways we could do it. What are those two other ways, just to remind us? Like put it into, like have x minus 9 times x minus 2. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> What's that called? Factoring. Yeah, factoring. Why is it called factoring? Let's run another example right alongside it. Uh, an example of factoring that we might be more uh, comfortable with, like taking a number and factoring it. How do you factor a number? What multiple number? What, well, the word we're looking for is factor, right? what the factors are. What multiplies to make 15? 5 times 3, there we factor it. That's what we're doing with this polynomial, this quadratic. We are finding what multiplies to make that quadratic. We factor it. Okay. Um, and then we set each of those factors equal to zero. Why can't we do that? How come we can just say, well, this times this equals zero, so this has to be, back up a little bit. 
this has to be equal to zero or this has to be equal to zero. How come we could say that definitively? For sure. Yeah, because we multiplied to get zero. And if you multiply to get zero, you cannot multiply to get zero without multiplying by it. zero. So we solve for x of nine and x is two. And then we could have, but we probably wouldn't choose to complete the square unless I make you, which I will sometime. Okay. So we could have completed the square to then, if you could factor it, the choice between factoring and completing the square, I definitely factor it each time, unless the factoring is really, really difficult, then I might use completing the square. But given the choice, you probably choose, or of all the choices, choose quadratic formula. It just works every time. Another question? Annette? 55. Combining some complex numbers. You multiply these together, like even in Algebra 1 student just learning about multiplying binomials together, uh, does not realize that i is actually the imaginary number they could multiply these together. They might not be able to simplify it because they don't know that i is actually a, has a value. But uh, otherwise, it's all the same. You like terms, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so negative 3 times 1 gives us negative 3. Uh, negative 3 times negative 2i is going to be positive 6i. Move on to 7, 7i seven times 1 is 7i. Uh, and then 7i times negative 2i will be negative 14i squared. I times i, i squared. I like terms. I minus 14 i. No, that's 13. That's 13. Yeah, so 13. Okay, so algebra one student multiply them together. Great, my like terms. Except for now, what is i? Square root of negative one. That's the square root of negative one. So we take i squared. That's the square root of negative one. Uh, squared. That's the square root of negative one. Square root of negative one. That's negative one. So now this. What is this worth? Fourteen. Fourteen. Negative fourteen times negative one. Positive fourteen. Now we have like terms here. Fourteen minus three is eleven. That's thirteen nine. Okay. Another question, Chance? You have one. Okay. Um, so this is um, right as the product of two factors. It's the same same factor as quadratic. Product of two factors. When uh, when chance you gave me the example, or the the idea of how to do this differently by factoring. So this factoring is a little bit more difficult. Right? How do we approach this factoring? So we run into this maybe thing. Yeah. And then maybe it's 2h, and then we got to figure out what multiplies to 20, but then we just got to luck out that whatever factors you pick of 20, when you multiply by 6 and multiply whatever that one is by 2, uh, we're going to wind up with negative 31h. Oh, so this needs to be negative, this needs to be negative, and this is all this guesswork. Right? How do we take the guess out of that? Draw this not because it's x like x, like the number of x, it's just to organize our, our thoughts here. So AC means A times C, which gives us 240. And down here, negative 31, just B. And what numbers are we trying to find here? 
They do what? They multiply and add. Like that. When I multiply to make a positive and add to make a negative, so we know that they both negative. Okay, multiply to make a positive and add to make a negative. Okay. And now there's a little bit of guesswork, but there's certainly a lot less checking our guesses, like a lot less work to check our guesses here. So let's just find some factors of 240. 24 and 10. 24 and 10. So that's not going to add to negative 31. And 16. All right. If there's any disagreement there, let us know. But uh, if 15 times 16 is 240, then we can see negative 15 uh, minus 16 would be negative 31. That's good. So what do we do with that? Now that we found those two numbers. Take negative 31 and we, re, we replace it with negative 15h minus 16h. So the factors in these numbers are in the are, are also factors of 240, uh, and 240 is made up of all the factors of 12 and 20. So we're making these shared factors, you know, forcing them that way. Group of two, make sure you include that negative there if there's one. So what are we looking here for? What they have in common, what we can undistribute from both of them. What's the biggest thing we can undistribute from these? 3H, 4H minus 5. What can we factor out from these two? 4. You do a 4. And since that first one's negative, I always like to pull out a negative. Because right? if we think about what we want to have happen is this parentheses and this parentheses be the same. This one is positive, so we like this one to be positive as well. So we need to pull out a negative to do that. Negative 4, H, negative 5. Negative 4 plus negative 5 is 20, that'll work. And now we've got two terms, 1, 2. They share a factor of 4h minus 5, so we undistribute that 4h minus 5. <coughs> that leaves 3h minus 4, and we have that here. If you're lucky and you get it on your first, you know, your, your third or your fourth guess, trying that original method, like maybe it's 6h and 2h, or I'm not sure which it is, but if you happen to guess it, maybe your third or fourth try, maybe it was faster than doing all that. But on average, I would say you're not that lucky. So I'm going with this uh, surefire way to, to factor it. If it's factorable, if you can't find these two numbers, so they multiply to make AC and add to make B, it's unfactorable. You can't factor it. Okay. Any more questions? Pregnant pause as a no. And we'll put away our everything else but pencil, pen, scratch paper, calculator. Stuff you can 